Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosada. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my bishop, Jimmy A. Austin III, out of Victory Christian Center in Philadelphia, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This morning's service, I'm here on a Sunday, praise the Lord. This morning, we're going to be talking about the heart of integrity. You know, what is on the record will play. All truth will come out. So grab your Bible, grab your paper and your pen, and get ready for a mighty word from the Lord this morning. And as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Let's everybody stand for prayer, please. Seven morning, four fifteen. Father God, we just come before you this Sunday morning and worship and praise unto you. During this Bible study, I ask you that this word be edifying for correcting and building and guiding the men and women of God. Let your speaker decrease so that you may increase. And let these people know that you have a plan for them, despite their condition, despite their disability, despite their inability, that you have an ability that was set inside of them before the foundation of this world. But you require truth in their heart. I ask that you put integrity and truth in their hearts from every man, woman, and child in this place in the hearing of my voice. If you agree with me, let the house say amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, Y'all may be seated. Y'all know I've been going a little while, so I'm a little rusty. But boy, did I miss y'all. Yeah? I think I got to fly out of here today. But uh, while I was out there, the Lord made something else in my heart. I told y'all I had a plan. Uh, the weeks that I was here, we talked about come clean, dirty, confession, sin. And we started talking about the power of unity. You know, so I had a plan. So today, we're going to talk about what's on the record. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. And we're going to be talking about, hey, all truth comes out, don't it? Yeah. I don't care. In depth, truth is going to come out of that. Amen? <clears throat> so we're going to talk about the heart of integrity this morning and uh, how God views your integrity, okay? Because integrity is very important in God's sight. It's very, very important. It don't matter what sin state you're in, but if you're honest and transparent, and allow God to help you through it, but he needs you to be, what does the world call it? Stop being in denial, right? You know, don't be in denial, brother or sister. So but God says, tell me the truth, and then I can help you, even though he knows all things, right? But he needs you to know the truth. Ain't that right? Yeah. But let's see what he said to the Pharisees here. Let's look at Luke chapter 12, starting in verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together in innumerable, innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they tried one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware you of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Now that leaven, in, the, in, the, in our day to day, we put leaven or yeast in bread, right? So that it puff up, right? The reason why we eat what we call a cracker or Jesus' body is unleavened bread. So that means the cracker. Now, leaven represents sin. Unleavened represents no sin. So when you put yeast in the bread, Jesus said, you put the sin in the bread. But when you don't put no yeast in it, there's no sin. That's why we eat his body, because it has what? No sin. Y'all got that? Okay. All right, verse 4. I mean, chapter 2. I mean, verse 2. See, I told you. Minute, minute. <laughs> For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Look at that. All truth is going to come out. Amen. Amen. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the where? Light. And that which you have spoken in the ear in the closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, look at that, he's even called his friends. Be not afraid of them that can kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I forewarn you, whom you shall fear, fear him, which after he has killed, that sounds like God can kill you, huh? After he has killed, <laughs> has the power to cast you into where? Hell. Yes, I said, fear him. Amen. But look at what you told the Pharisees. You know what I'm saying? You need to be having a healthy fear of God, and all truth will come out. Go to um, Matthew chapter 5. I don't care, all truth is going to come out. What's on the record going to play? You will meet an individual. They will seem like the nicest individual in the world until you get 
to sit down and Amen. talk to them. After a while, you get around and you see all truth about them. Yeah. 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 They didn't tell you everything. So all of a sudden, there's the real deal. I'm telling you, you can scratch a record. Remember how we used to have scratch records back in the day? How do we stop that record from scratch? We try to keep playing. We put something on it, didn't yeah. we? Well, I'm going to put something on you so you stop scratching. <laughs> say things to them, we make promises, and we do all these things, we get angry with them. You know what the, the thing that bothers me the most, especially with Christians, is this. We will hurt an enemy and still think we can get into the presence of God. Thank you. Thank still think God will hear us. Well, you know, I don't care about you. Well, Father, and, uh, you know, who? He ain't heard you. You know why? Because you're wrong. All right. You did it wrong. Why well, ain't got to apologize? All right. Really? I'm clean, dirty, like I always say. Amen. But look at what God says you got to do before you come to prayer. Because <laughs> we don't respect one another a lot of things. I hurt you, but I'm supposed to let it go. Well, you're a Christian, let it go. I'm a human being like you. I feel just like you feel. I don't care if I teach the word. I don't care if I, I pray all the time. I still got an emotion inside of me that says, I love you. You hurt me? Yes. You can't even find enough in your heart to come back and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Something's wrong with that picture. Oh, yeah. Go to verse 22 of chapter 5, Matthew. Oh, y'all warming me up now. It's all right. <laughs> but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a, what? Oh. Without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say unto his brother, Rekha. Now I need to stop there. That's an old Aramaic verb, <coughs> empty, <laughs> worthless. If I say to you, you're empty and worthless. Jesus said, don't do it. I'm not supposed to tell you you're empty and worthless, especially if Jesus is in you. You can't be empty if the Holy Ghost is in you. Amen. So he said, if you say to America, shall be in what? Danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, no intellect. You're stupid. So when I call you a fool when Jesus side, he said, you're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. But it's funny. In another verse, he calls them fools. So apparently this means two different things. Because huh? he told the Pharisees, you fools. But here he said, don't call your brother or sister a fool. Why? You thou fool shall be in danger of what? Hell fire. I'm not supposed to say you don't have any intellect. Whether you can read, whether you can't read. Whether you can write or whether you can't write. If you're in the body of Christ, don't you know most of the disciples and the apostles could not read or write? But they have more God in them than all those theologians Amen. and all those Pharisees. Even they took notice of them and said they were unlearned and ignorant men. But one thing they took notice of in Acts chapter 4 said they were at the feet of Jesus. Amen. They noticed they had been with Jesus. Can somebody recognize that you've been with Jesus? Amen. 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 Verse 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gifts to the offering, there you go. If you bring prayer or offering to God, and there remember that thy brother has ought against you, you bring the gift to God and remember that your brother has a problem with you, or you have a problem with your brother, what does Jesus say? Leave there your gift. That's right. Therefore, at the altar, and go thy way, and first be what? Reconcile. Have some integrity. <laughs> Reconcile with your brother. And then come and offer your gift. But go get it right with your brother or sister before you bring me anything. Amen. Don't pray to me. Don't give me no money. Don't do nothing for me in service until you go get it right with your brother or sister. Then bring me your offer. Amen. Oh, man. Boy, listen to this one. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 25. <laughs> Agree with thy adversary quickly. Go get it right fast. While thou art in the way with him, let's say any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, then the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast in the way of prison. Amen. Amen. But see, that's a perfect example of someone who's religious. They feel like they can still get at the throne of God knowing they got hate for them. Knowing they've been murmuring and complaining. Knowing they've been talking about their brothers. You know, certain things don't happen overnight. 
You know, I said there were a few people in here that showed integrity when things came their way, especially with me. You know what I mean? You know? Uh, he wasn't here. Charles wasn't here last time, but y'all heard me talk about how Charles came to me. But that brought us closer. See, sometimes those little conflicts are designed to bring you closer. How many of you have been best friends with the person you first had a fight with? Next thing you know, y'all were best friends. No. Conflict. Next thing you know, you got every last friend. But how many of y'all been friends with people who kissed you, the next thing you know they stabbed you, and then you don't want to have no more to do with them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but they taught you who not to be with, didn't they? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because we got to understand, some people stink in the stink. And you get pulled. I think it was me and Marsha. You can't change the, nobody. You got to be the one to change. Quit worrying about your neighbor changing and you just change. Amen? Because as you change, they either going to want to change with you or God going to remove them. You just keep on changing for the Lord. Amen? Go, matter of fact, go to uh, Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. And let's look at this. Since I was talking about changing and thinking. 23. I'm at 28. Lord, come on, eyes. 23, verse 7. And what does it say here? It says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. You can't change nobody. Only God knows the intent of the heart of a man. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but the heart is not with you. <laughs> what's on the record going to play? Sooner or later, what's on their heart going to be revealed? And if it ain't integrity, get away from it. Integrity is important. Whether you do right or whether you do wrong, you need to tell the truth about it. That's integrity. Let's talk, let's look at this. Integrity means this. According to the world, integrity is moral uprightness or sound moral principles. Honesty. To be honest. You know, you can't be honest using the word ways. Using street ways. You always got to lie. Then as soon as you lie, you got to back that lie with another lie. And then you got to back that lie with another lie. The best liar is the one who keeps on remembering his lie. <laughs> or get to the place where he, that lie in his mind becomes truth. But if it ain't true, sooner or later, you're going to forget. How do you think cops bust you? That's why they leave you in the cell for hours and hours to interrogate you. Make the room cold. It's happy to be locked up. Because they go after a while, you're say, yeah, I killed him. <laughs> That's what it's about. Just watch 48 a few times. They come in there tough, go out crying. We see an hour of it, but that boy been in there for minutes upon minutes upon minutes. Amen. Let's go to, uh, no, let me give you another meaning. It means doing the right thing before God and the world. So integrity means doing the right thing before God and the world. If you do what is right, you are walking in integrity. Integrity should be the goal of every Christian. Because that's what the world needs to see. If you're a Christian, the world needs to see integrity coming out. How do they see that? In your workplace? In your family? You know, I always had a habit of just admitting what I did. I just, you know, I was a poor liar. So I always knew if my family or friends came to me and said, did you do this? I just immediately said, yeah, because I know I got caught. So it wasn't no need to lie. Amen. The thing that really wins people to the Lord is when you decide to do the right thing in front of them. Everybody in here, because some Christians should be trying to win people to the Lord. That's why I come here. I'm about souls. I'm not about my pocket. I plan to get God rich. The only way you can get God rich is by filling his kingdom with souls. He already owns everything. But the thing he lacks is souls. And that's the thing the devil wants to take. Every soul from God that he can. Amen. All right. That's what separates us from the world is our integrity. Integrity separates us from the world. Go to Deuteronomy. <laughs> Go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Oh my Lord, you go with the 
And let's look at verses 5 and 6. But thus shall you deal with them. You shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art a holy people. Yeah, that's what I want. For thou art a holy people. Thou art supposed to be holy, filled with integrity unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people. Ain't that wonderful? Unto him. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto him above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. So when you become a Christian, you're more important than all the people upon the face of the earth. But he expects you, that special people means he expects integrity out of you. Amen? And we're going to hit a whole lot of verses here that's going to be covering that. God saves us. Amen? So that he may change our behavior. Amen. <laughs> Go to Deuteronomy 26. God saves us so he can change our behavior. Deuteronomy 26. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Look at verse 18 and 19. And the Lord has vouched thee this day to be his peculiar people. Peculiar people means special people. As he has promised thee, and thou shouldst keep all his what? Commandments. And to make thee high above all the what? Nations which he has made in praise and in name and in honor. And that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God as he spoke. Amen. What separates from us from the world in, in our lifestyles? How we handle things. You can live by a set of rules, but nobody's life is changed. How many set of rules we got? We got it got in the hood. You know, no snitch. But your life has changed? No, no snitch means you're walking in fear. It don't mean you're, you're weak. It means you're fearing that person told you snitch on a key. That's walking in fear. I don't fear that. Especially when I know when I die who I'm going to be with, I ain't fearing you. Now, now, let me back that up a little bit. Now, when I'm in the jail world, <laughs> when I'm in prison, I don't snitch. <laughs> Amen. I pray. <laughs> Amen. I just want to clarify that. But why am I here? I don't care. I'm all for them. Anyway, if you are sitting here with a fight and that Bible has not affected your behavior, you are no different than the world. If you're sitting here with a Bible, how many got a Bible? Amen. <laughs> And that Bible hasn't changed your life? And one aspect with another, you're no different than the world. You're no different. You can be full of knowledge, not full of your spirit. Who's reading the Bible to have their spirit changed? Nobody? Amen. Two, three people. That's a shame, man. But I understand. I understand. I understand. <laughs> Integrity is the outward demonstration of holiness in your heart. Now remember I said earlier, when God saves us, he saves us so that he may change your behavior. So integrity is an ultimate change in your behavior. You went from lying to telling the truth. That's all I'm saying. And the Bible will help you go from lying to telling the truth. Because God holds up a big mirror in this Bible to say, this is how you stink in my nostrils. Now I love you anyway, change. Because if you ain't consistently changing, you ain't mine. Because every time you get something right, God wants to show you something else about you that's wrong. Then you're going to say, now change that. Then you're going to change that. Then you're going to say, now change this. Then you're going to say, now change that. This is ever, over and over. I'm constantly changing every single day. As soon as that old man is talking to me, rise up. I said, oh, Lord. But you know what I love about it now? No matter how I go back to the way I used to think, it used to be a week or two before I said this. Now it's like instantaneous. You know, as soon as I do something, man, I didn't know. Oh, I'm so sorry. But it was a time, man, just give it to me. I'm going, I don't care about them. Then three, four days later, when I ain't got no money, I'm sitting on the side of the room, hurting. And Lord, I'm sorry for that. Well, you should have got that thing right quickly. And you wouldn't have to go through this. You know what I mean? I learned to get it done quickly. But then Terry, you go to 1 Peter chapter 2. I'm happy to 
be here this morning. I miss y'all, man. I ain't gonna lie. I, I miss y'all. First Peter chapter 2. But I'll only be going for one more week and I'll be back. I guess so. Be the 20th. Then I'll be right back on my Thursday nights, right? Y'all miss Thursday night? Yeah. Oh, Lord, that's me. Oh, I'm going to keep on flying. <laughs> First Peter chapter 2. Look at verses 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation. Look at your identity here. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, special people, that you should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of what? Darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Which in time past were not a people. Amen. <laughs> but now, but now, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but have obtained mercy. Look at that. Jesus, y'all be honest on that. But you really don't deserve it. How do people know you are full of the devil? How do people know you're full of the devil? It's because of your behavior. I call you a devil at the drop of a hat, soon as I recognize it. I will. I will call you a devil quick. And I'm not talking about, you know, the black Muslims used to call white people devils. No. White people are my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I call you a devil because you got that demon in you. The devil only slanders the brethren. The devil only attacks the brethren. And how does he do it? He uses weak people like you. He uses weak saints. He uses carnal saints. He used people who are weaned on milk and not meat. He used people who have who have pride problems. He used people who have anger problems. He used people who are trying to uh, solve their issue with a substance. Because the Bible says when you allow one in, seven others come in. Then they bring seven. Then they bring seven. And each day it's harder and harder to keep that devil out of me. But see. The Bible says, touch not my anointing, do my prophets. And I have an armor of God called the anointing around me. And I'm going to call you a devil and then pray for you. I'm going to rebuke you. I'm going to cast you down. I'm going to let you know you can't touch this. And I ain't singing uh, to eight. What's that boy? Somebody hammer. I ain't singing hammer. Over here. You can't touch this because I'm covered by the anointing. Amen. <laughs> You just better be happy I didn't use the world ways to attack you. <laughs> you better be happy I'm ever Christian. I didn't use the world ways to attack you. The world can teach you skill, external. Then you come into the church and they teach you external skill. Then you are going to focus on skill instead of internal. That's why I said you need to be focusing on your spirit. Because nobody is teaching you Internal. While you're in here, we are teaching you the internal methods of changing your spirit from carnal flesh into the spirit of God. See, it's a war going on inside of you, people. Inside of you is saying, I don't want to be like this. That's your spirit. I don't want to be like this no more. And your flesh saying, no, I want No, I don't want to get me. You know it tastes good. And your spirit is saying, leave me alone. I don't want it. Your flesh saying, no, that's what you do. But that's what the church is designed to do. We gotta build you up in your spirit and tell that flesh, yes ma'am. Well that, that that's if you want to receive it. And I will say this, when somebody hugs you or touch you, that's what we call laying on a hand. Yes, I talked about that one time before. It's called a transference of spirit. Even when you have, now I'm going to get you with the big one now. Yeah. It ain't even like they're hugging you. All right. The worst transference in the spirit is fornication. Uh -huh. Sex. Yeah. Y'all both transfer something one to another. It may be woo but guess what's happening? What's inside of him is going to you. And now baby daddy. Did that baby come out?